This is Lucy. And this is Entropy, back again. Um, we're going to be talking about uh, mythology and how it's reflected in our everyday lives. And um, I've, for me, you know, I've sort of talked about this in my Facebook, so some of you will already be familiar with this. So, uh, so here we go. There is truth in mythologies and legends. There are not just fairy tales to be pushed to the side and ignored. We can learn a great deal from them. We have gods and men warring against each other, angels against demons, etc. Um, mythology is, reflect is a reflection showing what is going on within and around us and with each other. Mythology can often be taken uh, in a secular view, can be looked at as what is going on here on the secular level, here on, on earth, within politics. Uh, of course, all of these religious institutions deal with politics regardless of what they say. They are heavily involved in it. A matter of fact, there is many who believe, and history really bears this out, that civilization was crea uh, created entirely to keep those who are in power in power, and of course those who were in power before civilization were the priest class. So I'm going to be looking at a more secular view as below, you might say, and I'm going to start with looking at an ancient Egyptian god named Set and how the experiences that were going on within the political structure of Egypt were reflected in their mythology. Set was considered the patron of winds, storms, chaos, evil, darkness, strength, war, conflict, and Upper Egypt. As his story begins, we see him simply as the sort of a god of the darkness, but not equating darkness with evil, simply as 12 hours of night follow 12 hours of day, simply a balance for the day time, which is pretty much the way that I look at what people look at dark hearts or darkness. Um, it is used and is maintained, uh, the chaos being the um, the balance to order. I'll be reading from a website here. Egypt, the gods of ancient Egypt, uh, set. This is uh, toregypt.net. Now, in early times, Set was worshipped as the god of wind and desert storms and prayed to that he would grant the strength of the storms to his followers. Although he was always a dark and moody god, he was believed to be the ally of his brother and sister, Osiris and Isis, the counterpart to his sister wife, Nephiltus, and the defender of their father, Ra. So you see at the beginning, he's just worshipped just like any other god. He's, uh, he, his personality traits may not be, you know, someone that uh, you might want to have over for a beer or anything. But uh, he was definitely worshipped as a god and revered as such. Now, continuing on this site, it says, But somewhere along the line, the view of Set changed. He became a god of evil in eternal conflict with the gods of light, and especially with Horus, the son of Osiris. Set became identified with his former enemy, the serpent Epip, but, oh, I mean, by the 
26th dynasty, Set was a major antagonist and embodiment of evil for the Egyptians. And it says why this change came about is unknown. Well, it's a political change. I'll get into that from another website. I think that this story of Set and the priest of Set is well reflected in the way that, uh, that Lucy and I and others like us are treated. Because the thing is, Christians want to talk about how they're persecuted and Christians want to talk about how the Illuminati are in control and whatnot. Well, it's not very difficult to figure out who's in control because their God is the God of the world. And Christians, you outnumber anyone on this planet two to one. And that's just Muslims. That's Muslims. The third largest, I believe, is Hindu. And you outnumber them three or four to one. Christians, you are the majority on this planet. So let's stop this nonsense about how you're persecuted. The thing is, if, if you want to know who's in control in any civilization, all you have to do is look at the priest class and look at who they worship and who the majority of the world worships with them or the majority of the state, depending. Of course, now it's a worldwide thing. So, this absolute nonsense that somehow Christians, some, some cabal behind the scenes is actually in control and you're not foolishness. Now to go a little bit into the history here's another website landofthepyramids.org this uh, describes what happened in a, in a very simplified way. Early Egyptian mythology about Set. In early Egyptian mythology, Set was the brother of Horus. Set was the patron of Lower Egypt, and Horus protected Upper Egypt. Set represented the night, and opposite to Horus, who represented the day. Together, the, together these two gods performed many duties of friendly nature for the dead. He was seen as a great warrior who protected the sun barge of Ra and fought the snake monster called Epap. Other legends say that together they set up and held the ladder by which the deceased made their way from, he uh, from earth to heaven. He was officially worshipped in an insignificant province west of the Nile, which was a starting point for the road to northern oasis. The inhabitants of this area were mostly guides to desert caravans, and it was in their interest to worship Set, the lord of the desert. When the upper and lower Egypt became united, Set and Horus were often depicted together, crowning the new pharaohs. Set is turned into the god of evil. Upper Egypt then conquered lower Egypt, and the pharaohs and the kings of the south started to portray Set as the evil enemy of Horus, and turned him into a god of evil. Does this sound familiar, Christians? What do you refer to as, what, what, what are the former gods? Baal and... There's uh, Belial, Be uh, Beelzebub. What happened to these former gods, Lucy? What are they now, according to Christians? Uh, demons. Demons. No... Now, why do you think they call all these former gods demons? Because, because they make evil. Whatever they, whatever is not of their god is considered evil. When, when we relay our spiritual experiences to you Christians, uh, what is the normal response we get? Um, they say that my path is evil, it's from the demons, or... I have, I've had experiences where, where I'm, I've been told by entities in, in a dream to read the Bible, and I was asked, well, are you sure, did you test that spirit? 
He told me to read the Bible, Christians. Let me tell you something. If you don't want to be lumped in with the Christians, then don't call yourself one. If we're referring to Christians, we're referring to people who say that they are believers in Jesus Christ and do not do anything that Jesus Christ told you to do. If you're wondering what we mean by what, when we say, you Christians. Get back to this website. Upper Egypt then conquered Lower Egypt, and the pharaohs and the kings of the south started to portray Set as evil enemy of Horus and turned him into a god of evil. This is entirely done for political motivations. By the period in Egyptian history known as the Third Intermediate Period, Set was referred to as the God of Evil. Figures of the benign God are uncommon, for most of them were destroyed by the Egyptians when they changed their views about him. If you believe Christian, Christendom, if you believe that your religion is going to continue for all eternity, then all I have, uh, all I say to you is you can look back, look back in history, because there's no religion that continues on and on and on and on. We're not promoting a religion, Lucy and I. We're promoting spirituality. And anybody who adheres to any set religion really is not getting spirituality at all. I can understand associating with people um, and even going to church, but adhering to that religion and calling yourself whatever it may be is, uh, is, is really just, uh, just playing into the political uh, game of this world, and it is not a spiritual understanding at all. Going on, the Egyptians of the 22nd dynasty went so far as to erase Set's name from many of the older inscriptions and even to change the names of the former kings that were com compounds of Set. Set, the Greek, the great and strong god of prehistoric times, was converted into Satan with the rise of the cult of Cyrus. Typhon, or Typhu, was the Greek form of Set. A serpent-like monster, familiar Christians? In ancient Greek mythology, the typhoon was supposedly of red color and made a sound much like that of a donkey, the animal to which Set is sometimes associated. All of these religions, Christians, are very ancient, and virtually every single allegory in that book you call the Bible, especially the book of Genesis, is dead taken from other religions it's so sad that not only do you not know that but when we point it out you pretend as though we are somehow corrupting you the truth hurts sometimes and it's scary but it never stops being the truth on this subject of course since lucy generally refers to herself of a spiritual nature as a luciferian Let's discuss um, how many, many people see this entity formerly named as Set as the, the archetype of what we now refer to as Satan. There is a religious sect that is an offshoot of the Church of Satan, the Levian Church, um, probably one of the ones that has had more success and it is called the Temple of Set. Those of you who may be interested in Satanism, I would certainly investigate these people before looking into Levian Satanism. Levian Satanism, quite frankly, is just for a bunch of metalheads and dope smokers. No offense to metalheads and dope smokers, of course. Anyway, looking at um, something from the Temple of Set, the ancient, uh, here, I'll, I'll give you the, the uh, it is uh, unexplainedstuff.com, religious phenomena, 
Temple of Set. The ancient Egyptians were perhaps the first to personify evil as a distinct force in the universe, but they retained a concept of unity by representing the evil god Set as a brother of Horus, prince of light and goodness, although Set was actually a younger brother of Osiris, who, with Isis his wife and Horus his son, comprised the Egyptian trinity. He was represented as Horus's brother because Set stood for the opposing forces of evil and darkness. Set was jealous of Osiris' power and sought to seize the throne from him. In ensuing struggle, Osiris was dismembered, leaving Horus to oppose his, bro his evil brother-slash-uncle. In the war between the two that ensued, Horus and the forces of good prevailed. In the story of Set's insurrection can be seen as a parallel with the Hebrew tradition of Lucifer's rebellion, his defeat by Michael and the angels, and his subsequent expulsion from heaven. Set, therefore, is clearly an early forerunner of Christianity and Islam's uh, ir irreconcilably and absolute evil Satan. This is interesting here, okay? The Temple of Set maintains, however, that regardless of how evil Set may be portrayed, his essential function of expanding the borders of existence and then returning the chaotic energy to the center has continued to the present day in the Temple cosmology. Set stands separate and apart from the forces of, na of the natural universe. Let's say that you Christians who believe this are correct when they say that eventually Satan will be conquered and cast into the fiery pit. Then, Christians, what exactly is going to balance out your God anymore? What is going to keep him from becoming a dominant um, tyrannical force. Tyrannical force, a dominant tyrannical being. And the thing is, he already is to you Christians. That doesn't mean that he needs to be to everyone. And without that balance, and the ba it's getting out of balance in your favor, and therefore karma will balance it back out again. And I will say, with regards to karma, the same thing I hear so much from so many religious Christians. And that is, I don't care if you don't believe in karma. Karma is real. And you will see it coming. And it's about to bite you right in the you-know-where. What you sow, you shall reap. Exactly. That's, that's karma. It's in, the, it's in the Bible as well. These ancient gods... And since this is running long, perhaps we won't go into as many in this as we were going to. Perhaps this will be just mostly about Set and how that is reflected in the uh, story of Lucifer. Lucy has been involved and interested for some time in the the Urantia book, which we have been uh, discussing, and we have uh, we have even done this. Um, Lucifer, Satan, Manifesto. If you haven't checked that out, please do. That is an interpretation of the Urantia book, folks. I am a trained actor, so sometimes I'm just acting. But the thing is, does it take much to bring out that anger towards the people that merit that anger? But as Lucy was saying before, not only are these, these things reflected in the past, but they're reflected in the present and the future as well. Things, things work in cycles. So because a story is allegorical does not necessarily mean it's not based in something that actually happened. Yes, that is exactly right. Some may believe... Uh, that these ancient stories told a uh, truth that happened in the past. 
I would say in some stories it's not necessarily telling a past event but a future event. So some of these ancient stories uh, may not necessarily be telling about something from the from the past but could be even happening now or the future. And things happen historically cyclically so th these things could have happened in the past and are going to happen in the future as well. So this is where myth becomes reality. Yeah. Some of you have heard about this before, uh, but um, this is something I wrote down just recently. Um, so here it goes. Uh, what I want to say here is that I see the, quote, Lucifer Rebellion, unquote, as an allegory of my own life. So many things regarding this spirit, not just in the Arantia book, um, are a mere reflection. Someone who rebels against the despotic system, gods. Uh, someone who stands for freedom, who gives the fire of knowledge to humanity, yet suffers or is persecuted for it. Strange, thi strange thing is, people say, science fiction has a way of coming true but maybe this is where myth becomes reality since i became more aware of the changes in 2012 many things have been manifesting much faster so many synchronicities thoughts are things that's for sure maybe maybe some of these people i mean some of these myths uh, we're not telling of, of the past, but the future. But then again, as above, so below. You don't even have to believe in, in an entity named Lucifer in order to believe in this Luciferian doctrine spirit. Because the thing is, the very, the very things that our founding fathers were supposedly out there fighting for is the exact same thing that especially Lucy has been talking about for years now and that is this Luciferian idea. The only Luciferian agenda out there is freedom and liberty and I don't think anybody out there is against that except for the people who are in control of this world. Uh, the political forces that be will keep you under their thumb as best they can, whether that's you know feeding you a story that if you you believe in liberty and 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 uh, some kind of uh, of freedom from this tyrant that they call God, that that somehow makes you evil. Anyway, there's a lot of mythological figures actually that we could be doing. Um, I think this was a good start with Set. I don't know if uh, if if we're going to continue this. I, I guess it'll depend on what kind of um, what kind of uh, attention it gets from you, what kind of reception it gets for those who see this video. But uh, we have discussed it a mm, little bit. Uh, we we can uh, discuss even more. There there's certainly more mythological figures that stand for this same sort of Lucifer Luciferian type liberty freedom type consciousness and that's all we're talking about and Lucy and I don't believe in the structure of government very strongly if it, if a government exists it should be there as the as our forefathers said for the people and uh shouldn't be um um there just to protect those who are in control of course that's generally what they do anyway but we do preach for freedom and liberty and that is something that is frowned upon by those forces of evil out there who want to keep you down under their thumb whether that be the government or whether that be the church this is what is the Lucifer spirit. So when you have this rebellion, when you have this rebellion going on, this is uh, this is what you see in the story, and this is what you see now. So as above, so below, type of thing.
Right. Yeah. Uh, as above, so below. So we're we're going to wrap this up here. It's running a little long again. So this is Entropy 666. This is Lucifera. You all have a good evening and a nice weekend, night.